It is 90 degrees in Los Angeles this morning, and I am drinking hot mint tea. So much so, in fact, I have probably peed at least six times this morning in the past two hours. My voice is sore and not ready to face the day. My voice is a field, a cavern, a hill up word, which a hundred words crawl. Sometimes it acts more like a water slide, thoughts running to the top only to slip back down on their bellies. Livia, I realized this morning that one day soon you will be old enough to read my poetry. A scary thought for your parents, no doubt. But no more alarming than the fact that soon your child body will swell and stretch like an unfamiliar dress, a building uncollapsing. Soon you will realize that everyone in the world is afraid of looking stupid, and therefore you too will become afraid of looking stupid. I want you to know it wasn't always like this. Once you entered a bathroom while I was brushing my teeth. Mid-conversation, you pulled down your pants and proceeded to sit on the toilet, your tiny feet barely brushing the tile floor. No pause, no embarrassment, quite literally business as usual. <laughs> you made soft grunting noises as your body did what every body does. I know when you read my poetry and you find this poem, <laughs> The one about the sounds you made while shitting, you will probably be embarrassed, perhaps even hate me a little. I'm sorry. Maybe it's the quirky aunt in me. Maybe it's the poet who found something thrilling about unapologetic sounds, the dashing glory of childhood that curdled at the arrival of shame. How, in that moment, you reminded me of my own animal, my heirloom fear of being wild. How you, plank-legged fairy, princess of the wolves, taught me how to screech like an owl or its witch. Livia, I'm warming my throat today, and I feel like I'm lacing up my armor. I feel as though I'm off to fight the dragons, or better yet, befriend them. I'm trying to teach poetry in school districts that only know how to starve. I'm trying to show my students who don't know how to spell, how to write their names in anything but blood. I'm trying to learn how to give and foster forgiveness in a body that wants none of it. When you're finally old enough to read my poetry, I think we will have a lot of catching up to do. I've enjoyed relearning you as you age. Every year unwraps a new layer. Every poem is a different thread of mean. Soon, you can read each crude, screeching, slimy, heart-wrecked line, my sweet firecracker, my toothy walnut. Your mother has already given you your bookish vocabulary, which includes words like feeble, specific, and intergalactic, abnormally large for the average eight-year-old. Livia. Your words are weapons. Your voice is the strength it takes to wield them. Better yet, let's free ourselves from violence as you only have ever been a valiant champion of tenderness, Livia. Your, voice are, your words are lightning bugs. Your voice is the darkness that allows them to glow. Please know every sound you have ever made and will ever make will only ever lead to grace. So until then, until we can swap poems and cartons of ice creams, I leave you this note. I'm thinking of you on this scalding day as I drink my tea. I'm imagining your skinny legs and your simmering laugh and your bursting eyes and the way you climb so confidently into my lap to snuggle with your aunt, even though you are getting so big and so wise. And so soon, you will be old enough to read all of this.